The team over at Blackmagic have released another great version of DaVinci Resolve, and this is yet another large update. Let me walk you through seven of my favorite features. First, let's take a look at a much easier way to clean up some space on your hard drive. Head up to Playback and down to Delete Render Cache. Before, our only options were per project, so we had the option for all unused or selected clips. Now we can open up a separate window and see all the cache for all our projects. Then we can sort them by size, as I have it here, and then delete which ones we don't need and reclaim our hard drive space back. You can also further refine where to look by selecting the location in the project library. It's self-explanatory. Click the checkbox and then click on clear cache in the bottom left of that window. Another huge new feature is transcribing audio. Here I have a file in my media pool. I will right click and then choose the option for audio transcription, then transcribe. Now the program will go through the audio in your footage and then a new window will appear with all the text for the words from your footage. If you click on any word within that window, it will bring you to that part of the footage. You can also select a section and then click on the option to play the footage in a loop if you have to review if the transcription was correct. But primarily, you want to stay above 1-1000 situations where you're maybe taking there are options to insert and append, so if you only wanted to send a selected portion to the timeline, you can. If the text is hard to read, there's an option to make it larger. And there's also an option to swap the dark background and the light text. In the top right corner under the three dots, there is an option to clear all the silent parts. If I scroll down, I can show you where it shows the silent portions using the three dots in the parentheses. 100 millimeter that isn't as much of a concern. Now, as with any focal length, you also have the option to export the transcription as a text file. You can also create a subclip, which is just another file that you can add to your media pool containing only your selected portion. There's also a search option that will let you locate words that you think the transcription got wrong, or even if you just wanna find a certain portion of that clip. Now, the transcription didn't get mine wrong here, but let's select the word millimeter and let's pretend that anytime I say that, I want the transcription to actually say millimeters. I'll copy that to the search field. It then highlights all the instances of that word. Then I can paste or type in what I want to replace those words with. And then in this case, I select replace all and all those words I chose are replaced. Something somewhat similar, but entirely unrelated, we now have the option to create subtitles on our timelines. Head to the top where it says timeline and then create subtitles from audio. Here you have a few options that you can adjust as you see fit, including how many lines and gaps between subtitles. The default up top will allow Resolve to auto detect the language. And in the drop down list, you'll notice all the languages that are available. Click create and allow the system to analyze the audio and then create the subtitles for you. You'll notice that above the video row in the timeline, you have a new row for the subtitles. Let me select a portion of that timeline and let's take a peek at it. Your camera to help you steady the shot, but the high shutter speed isn't for making this shot more steady, it's for freezing the motion of your subject. As I alluded to a little bit ago, you it did a great job of determining what I was saying and also creating the subtitles for the right part of the footage. The only issue I see here is that the text is a little hard to read. And if you look at the inspector on the right side, it shows all the different subtitle clips in that row. However, we want to change all of them. So let's click on track and we can adjust the text settings here. The first thing that I will change is the color to black. They have a stroke on them. So I will also change that from white to black. But something that I think would make it stand out more is adding a background. Activate that setting. I'll change that color to a light gray and I'll increase the opacity so that's easier to see. Now, if we play through the footage. Difficult if your bird is in a tree and they have a lot of foliage behind them. But this is where something like AI would come into place. If your camera doesn't have that, obviously you do want to limit the size. If you click back over to the caption section and then click on any of those rows, it will bring you to that part of the timeline, which is nice. The last thing I want to show you is if you right click on the track in the timeline, there's an option to export those subtitles, which is helpful for things such as YouTube where you can upload those files. We now have the option to adjust what the color settings are on a timeline basis. I'll right click on this footage and when we choose to create a new timeline from that footage, another window appears. Initially, it will default to the project settings, but if we uncheck that checkbox, we now can make our own adjustments. There are several items that you can adjust here, but a nice new addition in Resolve 18.5 is the ability to change the color space.
This may or may not benefit you, but if you have a timeline where you need a different color space for a myriad of reasons, you now have that option. We now have the option to set the composite mode without needing to create two different nodes and then adding a layer mixer node. Right click on that node, head all the way to the bottom and you will see all the different composite modes that we have. Here's a quick tip. This footage has a lot applied. If you're happy with the color, but maybe not so much with the luminance or contrast, you can right click and then choose the color mode. If you have a hard time sorting through your media pool, or if you just want to stay organized, you can now use Resolve's AI power to analyze the audio in your media pool and sort it by type. I'll select all the clips, right click and choose audio classification, and then analyze. Now, if we click on the appropriately named bins under our power bin section, we'll see that Resolve has sorted all the audio correctly. In fact, none of the footage was in effect, so as expected, that bin is empty. The last thing I wanted to show you is how easy it is to recover your footage in case something goes wrong. Now, all you have to do is choose a timeline, right click and choose the option for restore timeline backup, and then choose the date and time that you'd like to restore everything back to. Previously, it was a lot hotter. We needed to click on file, then project manager, and then choose our project, and then right click and choose project backups and sort through them, which is a lot of additional steps. If there's something you'd like to see me talk about in Resolve 18.5 or even just Resolve in general, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe and follow up on any future videos, and I'll see you in the next one.